Welcome once again to our classes, Art for the Ageless. And today we are going to study oil pastels and we are going to adapt uh, some of the designs of flowers, the sunflowers, from Vincent van Gogh's uh, 12 sunflowers. We have a lot of materials on the table, so I want to explain each and every one and the reason. Uh, first off, you'll see that you have your oil pastels. So please pick up the box. It's a very simple, uh, it's called Cray Paws, and it is uh, made from pigment and uh, oil. So open it up and you will find a variety of colors. This is an inexpensive box, and we're going to learn how to use them. Okay, the next thing is this little piece of paper, if you'll take it and fold it in half. What happens when you're doing pastels is you get a lot of uh, residue, a lot of grit kind of builds up because you're working in levels. So if it gets to a point where you're overwhelmed, you simply take the little piece of paper and flick over your picture and just flick it. You might find you'll get a lot of residue here. Try to keep the residue on your towel, okay? Because if it gets on the table, because it has oil, it tends to stick on the table, on the floor. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't want to go there. The next thing uh, is you're going to find some blue paper on your table. Each one has a purpose. When we get to know our tools, we need to practice. So this is our practice strip. Then we're going to practice how to do the inside of the flower, the petals and the leaves separately. And then of course we'll do our main composition. About halfway through the main composition, I'm going to stop you. Uh, and I'm, we're going to take out a black piece of paper. Uh, we have uh, Yvonne over there helping us today. And she has arranged it so that uh, er, there is a table for when you finish what we're going to do. There's Elmer's glue, so obviously we're going to do something really special and different on this black piece of paper. It must be left overnight to dry. And when you come back next time, you'll find a new experience with another kind of pastel called a chalk pastel. Okay. Also, you will find that I have given you two prints to look at. One is vertical, one horizontal. I chose this particular flower to start with. Uh, and I could only get it in black and white. The other flowers, I chose this one here at the top and this one which is sort of on a three-quarter view. You also might find this dying one here. To start off with, let's experiment. We're going to take our long strip of blue paper and we are going to do the colors in order, starting from left and going to the right. So right now you may choose either to spill them all over the table or you may choose to pick them out of the box one by one. Your choice. Starting at the left, there is a red color. So we're very simply going to make little circles, just like that. Taking the next one, we're going to be very patient. Now, I know I said we were using white sulfite paper, but uh, those at home who have the white sulfite, fine. Uh, for today's experiment, I decided I wanted to explore the pale blue uh, construction paper. So if you have that and want to grab that piece, fine. If you want to continue with your white sulfide, that's perfectly fine also. So this is just a very simple uh, movement. We're just making a few little strikes, maybe three or four strikes. 
of each color. I want you to get to know the material. The pigments are fairly rich. It's almost like oil paint, but not quite, and it cannot be combined with oil paint. So you cannot do that. Uh, water will bounce right off of it, just like a crayon. Okay, so we have our lemon yellow, we have our lime uh, green, we have our darker green, our blue, uh, it's like an ultramarine, ultramarine blue or royal blue. We have our purple and our pink. The next one is peach. Now nowhere on the box will you find that they actually explain what the color is, and that's rather aggravating. I guess they just want you to explore. The next one is brown. Again, we're just making little swatches. Next to the last, you get your black. And finally, your white. Hold on to the white for a minute because I like you to explore a little bit. In the oil pastel, we like to layer. And in fact, the more you layer and the more you do these little feather strokes, uh, the more vibrant uh, and alive your picture becomes. So what we're gonna do is make 12 of these right next to the others. I want you to see what happens. So we're gonna make a white here, 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 and just keep going. If you want to, you can Give it a little bit of a pressure. A good thing about oil pastels, if you want to hurry, you can. It won't hurt. Nothing is going to hurt it. And of course, the white is white. OK, now we're going to go right back to the start. Oh, everything got out of, <laughs> everything just Wood out of place. Okay, figure it out. So I'm going to put my red over the white. Immediately you will see a change in the shade. How many see that? Good, you're developing your sight. You can tell tints. Of course it is darker because that blue came through in some way. Now let's see what happens with the orange. This is the fun part of experimenting with your new materials. I like that orange much better. My yellow, if you'll notice with the yellow over the white, of course it looks better. It looks much better. Next one is my light green. Again, we're taking these little feather strokes like this, like a chicken scratching for corn in the farmyard. <laughs> Gee, what an attractive image. Okay, now we're gonna do the green. Notice your green is now a little bit lighter because there is white underneath it. Blue. So you can see that some of the colors are more attractive with the white underneath them. So these are the choices that you're going to make as you do the picture. You're going to make these choices. Do I really want to do it straight onto the blue or do I really want to put a white down? Can you put any other color underneath it? Of course you can. You can do whatever you want. I see now as I fumble through the oil pastels that of course they're dancing out of order. But that's okay because now you are familiar with what's going on so you don't need to be told. Sometimes I can't tell the brown from the red. <sighs> Such as it is. Okay, here's my black. 
And of course, white is white. All right, so we've done that. Raise your hand if you've finished your chart. This is your individual color chart, good. And we're gonna go on to the next project. When Van Gogh started hit the center of his flowers, he did uh, a lot of variations. Uh, one of them was uh, a black, yellow, orange, brown. All right, so let's look at the actual. Okay, so we have black, or uh, yellow, orange, and there are little flicks of brown in there. Uh, up here we have an orange with, I'm sure there was a brown in back of it, and then we had a black and the yellow, intermittent, orange, and brown. So a lot of things were outlined. The flowers were outlined, the petals were outlined, the leaves were outlined. Everything was outlined. Even the vase, as you see, was outlined. But he still had these frantic little feathery strokes, even with the oil. All right, so we're gonna start with the three, we have three papers, and we're gonna start with the center flower. So let me just put that back. Okay, we're gonna hold it horizontally already. All right, we're gonna start with black center petal. So take out your black, and on the left, remember we're gonna do three of them, one, two, and three. So leave your space accordingly. Now when you do these, take your hand and use it as a, a wide landscape brush. In other words, what I actually did, I would like to encourage you to do also. Take your hand, Touch your paper with your hand and go this way. One is here, one is here, one is here. Now try to visualize. To visualize, you look at the original. You can either look at mine or you can look at the real thing. Black center, so visualize it. All right, we're gonna start black center. And I just made my first mistake because I really wanted to do the yellow. Why? Because I'm going to mess with that black. So I'm, when I put my yellow down, I'm going to try to stay away from it because as soon as I touch it, it's going to blend in and carry a little bit of black with it. Now I'm going to take the brown and I'm going to go around with the brown but very lightly and very quickly. I'm not trying to be like Van Gogh. I simply want to capture the essence of what he was trying to do. Now I'm gonna get my orange and I'm gonna go around that. I'm gonna bear down a little bit because I wanna get the pigment. Notice the pigment is starting to cause a residue. When we get to our final painting, if that annoys you, that's why we flick it away. Again, careful not to flick it onto the floor or the table. All right, now we're gonna take our brown and we're gonna go around that. Remember, your movements are not this thing. Your movements are like this. Remember, Van Gogh had an affliction, and when he was working outdoors, he never knew when that fire would strike him. And that is a most unpleasant thing to happen. And so he worked quickly and quietly and passionately so that he could complete a picture. All right, so this is our first one, and maybe we want to take a little bit, take your red, be brave, and see if you want to just strike a little bit here and there. 
I don't know what he saw. I can only imagine. All right, here I need to flick a little, so I'm just going to kind of push it down, and I'm going to take it and rub it on my paper towel. All right, I'm going to go to my second one, and it looks to me like I chose an orange center. All right, it looks to me like I chose this one up here with the orange center, and if I look over here, I'm looking at this one. Okay, this is what I'm looking at. All right, be brave. Start with the orange. Surround with the black. Raise your hand if I'm going too fast right now. Oh, you are getting good, aren't you? Okay, black around, little frantic movements. Brown. Orange. Do you have to do the following exactly? No, you don't. You are interpreting, you are adapting. Adapting is not copying. Adapting is taking something that someone else has done and interpreting it in your own way. Okay, so I did my orange. I think I'll try my yellow next. Any combination of these colors is fine. I could also have put the white down and the yellow over it. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go to my brown again, and that will be the end of this one. Again, you're working quickly. because you're just trying to get the, the essence, always the essence of what you want to achieve. Okay. My last one is that weird one that's like a three-quarter view and it starts black and it looks like a, almost looks like a, a, a cell or a worm or something and it's, it's like in, the, in a C shape. So I'm gonna go over here, make kind of a C shape like that. Then I notice there's yellow, and I did it again. And then orange. You see, this is a very complicated, very complicated painting. A lot of detail, a lot of work went into it. can imagine the amount of concentration that this man had to do this and achieve this piece, and then black around it. So each of the petals is different. I chose these because they had the most variation and the most life to them. And that's all I'm going to do with the center, just those three examples. So how many have finished at least two? Good, how many are just finishing the third one? Good. I like you working fast. That is the best thing. Okay. I would like to see uh, more of your work, so I'm gonna ask uh, very quickly, would you please hold up your picture so I can see, and I need to even go faster. Good, good. I like what I'm seeing. Thank you. Good. Okay. All right, let's move on quickly to the petals. All right, now each petal was different. If you notice the shape, let's look at the Van Gogh. 
the shape of the petals, they either look like bananas up here, or they look like they're a, a, a diamond, or they just, the ones that are dying are, are just twisted and, and downward. Notice there are a lot of brown inside each of the yellow. So there's the variations, in, just indefinite variations of these petals. So let's just basically uh, figure out what are we gonna do to capture some of them. Take your brown and let's try this one. Again, visualize, I'm gonna do four, I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. And they're coming out from the center like that. And they have a little crook to them and they come down. The second one, same thing, comes down. This one might be fatter. And a little one. Loose, very loose. All right, I'm gonna take my peach and I'm just gonna strike. Striking it. Take my orange, I'm gonna start striking it. Maybe I won't be so heavy. Uh, maybe I might try to lean it to the side. So you can strike forward or you can turn your chalk in a very horizontal manner where you will get a thicker line. And you can also run back and forth with it. So that's another technique. One technique is strike and the other one is lie down and just rub it fast. All right, now I'm gonna take uh, a white and I'm gonna go over here in the center. What other colors can I put in this? Well, I could just leave it that way. I'm gonna go and jump to the next one. I'm gonna take my yellow, lay it on its side, and I'm just gonna strike it and roll it. I'm gonna roll it as fast as I can because I am gonna say, well, this one's gonna die, so I'm gonna take the brown and I'm gonna go this way with it. But I also wanna take my purple and see what it can do. So my purple is gonna go right into my brown. So you're allowed to do all these things. You're allowed to do whatever you want, actually. There might be a heaviness here. The heaviness here on the petal would denote uh, more, more depth, more darkness. Uh, and more light up here. So the variations of light and dark are apparent. Again, I notice I did a purple here. And did basically the same thing. You can also switch a color and do a little bit of blue. Lie it down. Again, always when I, when I want that heaviness I'll put it, I'll put this darker color at the bottom and leave a lighter color at the top. So, again, it looks like I did more of the yellow. Looks like I did more brown. You can also try to get a little bit, I noticed there were also uh, some greens in his petals. Basically, what I want you to do with it is to understand the shape of the petal. All right, just understand the shape. I'm gonna go back. And you can blend colors over colors. Oil pastels are excellent for blending. All right, we're finishing off this. 
because I'm very anxious to do the, the leaves and get you started on your composition. We have a lot of work to do today. Okay, this one, I like that. Let's see, how did I get that? I did orange, I did brown, I went over it with yellow. Okay, so this one I like the best. How many have at least three petals? Okay, would you hold them up and show me so I can have an idea of how we're doing? <gasps> Great, wonderful, good, good. Okay, okay, I'm gonna speed along. My time is just going really fast. Let's speed along to the next project and we're gonna take a look at our leaves and then we have got to get started on the main composition. Okay. Guys. Uh, you may keep the black and white prints uh, and take them home and practice some more, okay? Oh, that's another thing too. Uh, if you like, it's just uh, if you have oil pastels at home, uh, go over them. Color the black and white with your oil pastels. In fact, if you want to take an oil pastel right now and strike on it, that might be an interesting thing to do. Let me see. Okay, suppose I take the orange and I actually hit this right here. Good. All right, so as you see, go ahead, do it. Mm-hmm, that's fine. It's a perfect, perfect way to exercise the actual product. All right, let's go and do our leaves real quick. His leaves are strange, okay? They are dying, they are crooked. Uh, let's take a look at his painting for a minute. They're up here, they're pointy, they're, they look pretty dried out. Even his, his stems have several colors in them, browns and dark greens. Uh, this one looks like it's just really scraggly. This one is going up in a weird way. So they're, everything is different, but the movement is apparent. All right. Let's just try three. Let's visualize, it's almost like a, well, I guess I have enough on my hand to make an impression. Center one, and that weird sickle-shaped leaf. Okay, very quickly, let's take a brown. And let's just make these weird leaves. Add your own design, add your own. All right, this is going to be mostly my yellow. Again, I'm going to go as quickly as I can. I'm out in the field and the sun is setting, so I become a little frantic and I begin to work a little faster. Second one is just absolutely strange. It has black in it. And maybe I can put some purple in it. And maybe there's blue in it and red. There are so many colors that you never focus on any one color because your eye is moving so quickly to get the whole experience in. Here's my sickle one. Again, what is important? Is it the color? Yes. Is it the shape? Yes. Is it everything? Yes. Yes on all accounts every single thing creates this composition. Again, 
This one is dying. I'm going to put some purple in it. I'm going to put some blue in it. Am I showing the viewer where they should put their eye, where they should be guided to look? Yes. Okay. Raise your hand if you have something to show me. I want to see. Oh, everybody's engrossed. We've got to start the composition. Okay. All right, down that goes. Why are you rushing us? <laughs> because you want to do everything. Because you should do everything. Okay. I'm going to put my, let's see, do we have our big, ah. Uh, all right, Yvonne is going to pass out the composition. So you have a few seconds left, you lucky soul. Just a few left to get the rest of your leaves. I think you're beginning to understand what I'm talking about. Do it on any color you want. Do it on this black and white. I think this is perfect, absolutely perfect to do it on. Take these home and color them. Buy a little box, five, six dollars, you know where, won't mention their name. And you get it in a few days and just practice. Okay, here we go. Almost there. What are we studying now? Composition. Okay, here we go. In a composition uh, and an adaptation, you have to figure out what you want and what you want to leave out. I'm leaving out the vase. I don't care about the vase. I don't care about some of the flowers. Maybe I like some of the flowers, maybe I don't. That's up to me. It's up to you also. If you see, uh, let's see how many do I want? About four, five if you're ambitious. If you see them that you like, uh, then you use them, okay? I am going to use specific ones. I'm going to use uh, this one. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one. And I might, I might use this one or I might adapt something else. This one is too hard for right now. Uh, this one is, doesn't have enough that I can see. I need to be able to see clearly. So I can see these clearly. I cannot see some of the others. All right, the next thing is, where do you want the placement? Uh, so let's take a look at the placement over here. Take your hand, this is your composition hand, and look at your paper and start to roll your hand over it. Where do I want this? Now you might have some residue on your fingers, that's good. Okay, maybe I want something here. So I decided that I want it over here. Take your hand and decide where you want it. The next thing you're going to do is a process that we call visualization. They bring people in and pay them thousands and thousands of dollars to help CEOs in big companies visualize. So you're going to do this in the process of visualization is you simply look at something that you want and you go back and forth till your eye can see it on the paper. So try to begin to see what you're doing. So we're going to do this first. So take, I think you could take your brown or you take your orange. I'll take my orange. And I'm going to try to visualize. I think I would like a full face over here. I think I would like a smaller one here and a variation. And maybe this one will overlap. I think I would like this one looking downward. And I think I'd like this one looking upward. It doesn't make any difference how you place it because this is kind of like a, a beginning composition. But always use your composition hand. Let it show you the direction you want to go to.
All right, please start with your composition hand and then put your chalk, your pastel in it and start to make a very light circle or if it's to the side, a three-quarter view, uh, similar to when we were studying portrait, that you had a full frontal three-quarter and so on. Oh, the head is going down or it's going up. All right? So. When you finish that, hold it up very quickly so I can see what you're doing. Okay, great, great, okay. Now we're going on to the next step, and this is the next step. I call it Project 6, in which you're going to start to visualize the center. And if you want to take a look, want to go back to your, uh, to your, to your strip, and you want to have it help you as a tool to visualize, use it. All right, so my first one, I decided, mm, maybe I like the middle one. All right, so I'm gonna start here by visualizing, let's see, I'm gonna have some kind of a center, then I'm gonna go around, then I'm gonna have the orange or the brown. I go over here, so, okay going to have a center. I don't know what else. I've decided I wanted my, my little, almost looks like a, a cell. I want that there, maybe that one. Right. Now I'm going to start to put the leaves, I mean, I'm sorry, the petals in. So I'm going to go to my petal strip and I'm going to visualize the shape. So visualize the shape, that funny little uh, diamond shape, and as it comes out of the flower, uh, it's about mm, maybe an inch, three quarter of an inch thick, and then, and then it goes, it takes a turn like a diamond. So let's make a couple of those. And it doesn't make any difference if you make a mistake because you could just go over it, do something else. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna to go to the other one because I'm not sure do I want this to overshadow that. And here I had this one uh, overshadow, this one was behind, but over here I think I'm gonna change my mind and I think I'm gonna have this one overshadow. So make your diamonds all around. Make some in back, go down. Okay, this one's gonna be dying, so it's gonna be going like this. Draw them quickly because you're not setting anything in cement yet, right? Nothing's being set. You're just exploring where things are gonna go. Maybe I really want this one to go ugh, down there. These are somewhat like stained glass because it's a kind of a staccato movement. It's quick and it's straight. Okay. We are running late. Faster, faster. Okay. I know right about now we're supposed to be doing glue. Okay. Ready, set, go. Use your strip, use the Van Gogh. I'm gonna take the black and I'm gonna hit the center. Over here, I'm gonna do, this is gonna be orange, so I'm gonna do the black around. So you have black center, around, orange center. I'm gonna put orange here. I'm gonna put yellow over here. Brown. I 
guess I just got a little bit ambitious, didn't I? How many have uh, pa oil pastels at home, may I ask? One, two, three. Okay, great. Please get some. Okay. All right, so now down here, I'm going to do the black. And I really can't spend more than five more minutes or else. Let's say this. Okay, let's make a compromise. You know the shape of the centers. You know what we're trying to do. You know the shape of the petals. That's all you need to know to start the next project. And we have to complete the next, the foundation for the next project or we won't be able to do it. So I'm going to just do the centers and then I am going to frustrate you by having you stop dead in your tracks. Last one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stop. Okay. Um, you can continue a second. Uh, Yvonne, thank you. Yvonne is passing out the last project. And so what we are going to do is we're going to do the last project and then uh, we're, we'll just come back to this. So if you've got this far where you've done your center of your flowers and you understand the shape of the petal, as I said before, and the leaves, we can go on. It is time. All right. So this, I'm going to show you the end product if you're interested in end, <laughs> end products. Terrible thing to say. So I'm trying to make a cake over here. All right, this is what happens. This crazy picture is made with, well, thank you, thank you very much. When I finished it, I looked at it and I said, oh, God, I just can't look at this. It's just like, boom, it kept hitting me in the face. I said, well, maybe if I just stand back maybe 20 feet, it won't be so vibrant. Uh, these are dry pastels. They're made from pigment uh, and like uh, uh, resin or wax, things like that, like you make crayons. Well, no, actually, crayons are made with uh, beeswax. But anyway, uh, okay, yeah, I can touch this and I can, my, my, it comes off of my finger because I, I forgot to spray it. When we finish these next week, we'll just take them outside uh, lay them on the ground and just spray the fixative on them and hope that it it works. Okay, wear loose clothing. So anyway, so what I'm going to give you uh, is the idea of take your composition hand. Look at what I have done. This is a good trick. Okay, take your composition hand, take your black paper. Everyone got it in front of you? Uh, it's on a, a paper mat for a purpose. Uh, if the glue starts to spill over, it'll spill over to the mat or yourself. Try, keep away from the edges. Okay, that's all I could say. All right, you're going to do a circle. It is not going to be in the center. It's going to be off center, let's say over here. And I'm going to do one, two, three. That's, that's all. One, two, three. I'm going to copy the pattern of the leaves, I'm sorry, the petals, and then maybe occasional uh, leaves. I'll show you right from scratch. Right now, take your glue, turn it to the left to open it up. A few little twists, turn it to the left. These are brand new glues, they should flow easily. Hold on a minute. All right. Wherever it, you put this glue, it will dry clear and it comes through. The black comes through. It's like stained glass. All right. So basically, I want you to do it thick. Don't give me a thin stream of glue because 
it's, that's not good. You want your limits to be thick. I would have put this further down. I think that I put it a little bit too far up because then I'm not going to be able to get some uh, leaves, uh, petals up there. Okay, we're going to start. Take your composition hand and decide where you want that first circle. I think I'll put mine here. Get your visualization of your circle. Take your glue, tip it slightly, hold it over the paper just in case it drips out, and you're going to touch it, starting to come out, and you're starting to come out, and you're going to go very thick around and stop. Okay? And I think I made mine too big. So you make yours smaller. Okay, that's the first. Second one. Oh, this is great with the grandchildren. Yay, we're doing glue. Grandma got crazy. Okay. And your third one. You might say, well, gee, this flower is awfully big, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting this one female artist. She used to do huge, huge paintings. If you know her name, now raise your hand. Huge. What was her name? Georgia O'Keefe. Ah, gotcha. Great. Oh, my gosh, so fantastic. Yes, Georgia O'Keefe, huge. Uh, paintings of the centers of flowers. So what you're doing right now is an adaptation of a Georgia O'Keeffe and a Van Gogh all at once. Aren't you proud? Okay, so now let's do our, I just know I'm going to drip all over. Okay, let's, uh, let's do some petals. Big ones. Uh, Georgia, we could do it too. You're not so special. <laughs> uh, you can make a mess. I can make one better. Nice and thick. Why? Because we need some boundaries. Don't let it go near the edge. Or you're going to be sorry. Very sorry. And don't make it skinny because, yeah. As long as you've got the material, be bold. Make a couple. When this dries, it's really fascinating. And you can do different things. You can make uh, pictures of anything you want. It doesn't have to be a flower make a truck, a rooster, you can do anything you want. And then all you have to do is just color it in with the pastel. And that's a horse of another color. So when we get down to it, we're going to study how to work with pastels, the dry pastel, next week. And I'm going to show you the difference between the colored chalk and a real pastel because the colored chalks that I ordered, they were so dull, ugh, they were just terrible. So I started to take my pastels and break them in half until I could get enough to distribute to you. So I think you'll have a better experience. So what's going to happen, uh, then I decided, oh well, I decided to order some more pastels, so we'll, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. But I do want you to get to know the difference between getting a quality material and a cheap material. Cheap is okay when you're learning, but when you found your passion, when you found what you really love to do, buy expensive. Add that $10. You'll be so surprised. All right, I'm going to lay this down.
I'm afraid like crazy it's going to just spill all over. Did we get, I don't know if we got a good picture of it, but I'll just hold it up one fast time. Eh, okay, that's it. Okay, um, I'm going to take my toweling. Please, I'm going to wipe it off. I'm going to turn it to the right tightly, and there'll be just a little drip at the top that I'll want to take off. See, if I don't do that, you know what happens with Elmer's glue. It cakes at the top, and you have to peel it off and, like an onion. Okay, so that's good to go. Great, we've done a lot of work today. Oh, I forgot. Ugh. You have a colored pencil at your table. It is either blue or yellow, and you need it. Oh, no, I just stuck my thumb in it. Okay, yeah, you have a colored pencil. Please, somewhere at the bottom, uh, write your name. I don't know what I did with mine. Ah. That's not... You could probably even do it with a regular pencil. Yeah, this is just as so long as you can. It's better to do it with that colored pencil so that you can see. I'm not going to worry. I did smudge it, but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm just going to just going to go over my mistakes. Uh, would you? Uh, Yvonne, please come up here and take mine. We have nine minutes, and I swear we are going to do this. Okay. I would ask you to hold it up, but eh, eh, don't do that. They look great. They look great. You have learned how to do the center, your petals, everything. And as far as, you know, getting toward the edge is fine also. Okay, let's... Uh, Cap up our glue, and I'm going to ask you to uh, just get up with your picture. And if you want to take the uh, the newspaper, uh, it's not a newspaper, the the bag with you, and and to help to support it, bring it over to the table. I didn't have one, Yvonne. And I think we should be able to fit. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people today. Okay, keeping it flat. Uh, would you want? Would you please start? Yeah, just hold to the whole thing up, and we'll probably overlap the paper bag of on, and we're just going to leave it there. All right. Uh, who else ready? Uh, you can take Jane. You can take the well since you're on your way. Okay. Yeah, just. Just pick up the paper bag. These are just shopping bags, just cut in half, by the way. If you ever want to make something for yourself at home uh, or for your kids, grandkids, just cut up a paper bag in half. Did Dango actually use things like that to make that? I'm sorry, would you talk a little? Did Dango actually use this to make that? Oh, no, this is an oil painting. Oh, oh. Uh, Van Gogh used oils. In the beginning, he did not have oils. He had to use charcoal. Uh, and it was either charcoal sticks, or, or you could make charcoal by leaving sticks in, in the fireplace. You know, it's burnt wood. That's what charcoal is, burnt wood. Uh, he made a lot of beautiful, beautiful uh, drawings of peasants working in the field, the potato eaters, people around their dining room table. Uh, and they were just gorgeous, all in charcoal. Nobody appreciated them. This was before he um, was able to buy paint? Uh, as, as far as the story goes, Van Gogh did not buy his first paints, although his, his brother uh, financed him. His first paints, as I understand it, were given to him uh, by, one of, uh, by another artist who was looking at his work. And so this is how he became introduced to oil paints. And from then on, he would spend everything on the oil paints. So this is an oil painting. Uh, what is most particular about Van Gogh is you can actually see the texture of his work. All right, let's flip back to uh, our composition. 
And let's go as far as we can in the remaining time because this is, yeah, that's it. I'm going to just pull down the other painting so you can see. And perhaps it might help you with your current composition. Crazy, crazy. Such fun. Uh, if you're interested, Van Gogh is one of my favorites. If you're interested in his life, which was extremely colorful uh, and extremely tragic, uh, you can Google it, you know, Google search and, on the internet, and, and uh, there are a lot of books out about him. You know, of course, the, uh, the movie Lust for Life uh, tells the whole story of him and Gauguin and so on. It's, it's a beautiful movie give you some understanding. All right, let's go at it again. So where were we? Uh, we're going to take some, some black now. And we're just going to finish up. All right, Mr. Van Gogh. No, I'm going to do, well, OK, let me do this. I'm going to do another black. OK, I'm going to get my brown. You are on your own, by the way. I forgot to tell you, you're on your own. All right? So whatever you want to do, you want to go brown around it, you want to go orange around it again, you can do whatever you want. And you can do it several times. There's nobody going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you. One thing I will say is, uh, experiment with putting colors within colors. In other words, if you have an orange and you're putting a brown around it, take your red and put it in a couple of places. Put it just, you know, just a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay. Try overlapping your colors, blending your colors. Just have a good time with it. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my, my petals. And try that little trick that we did by taking, taking the, um, the white and putting the white down first. And you say, well, I don't see that anywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's there. If you look at your Van Gogh, you're looking at this. And this is a lighter uh, yellow. And this is a, a yellow that some brown has been put in. Can you see the difference? Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at something, uh, you will notice, no, everything is not the same. Uh, especially in this flower right here, you will see the light at the top, light yellow, there's some brown in there. And down here, it's very brown, and, very, and the leaf is very dark, so that you know that there is something dying behind this one. And this one is dead. It is just all shriveled. So there's that feeling, the feeling of nature. All right, so we're going to go on. What do we have? Well, I just have a few minutes, but. I'm going to put this yellow over the white. And right away, I can see I have a little difference. And I'm going to put some brown over here. And I can do it very quickly. If I do a color very quickly in on its side, I can go over it, and it'll blend in. So for those of you who didn't see that, what I did was I put the yellow down first, then I put the brown over it, like that. And then I went and put the yellow back over it again. And as I did it, the colors blended into each other. Okay, So try that little trick. All these little tricks to go on. Have fun. Have fun. As I said before at the beginning of the class, 
we are trying a lot of different materials because if you weren't happy with, let's say, the watercolor, you weren't happy doing uh, ink, you weren't happy doing other things, maybe you can be happy doing this, okay? Maybe oil pastels will catch your eye and your feelings so that you know that you can express yourself in this media. And next week when we do the dry uh, colored chalk and dry pastel, you might all of a sudden say, no, now, this one, this is the one I want. Surprise yourself. Fall in love again. Just wait. I have more coming. We'll always have more coming. And our very last class is one of my most favorite, ink, pure ink, black and blue. And that is uh, it's one of my most favorite mediums to work with. So I know we've reached our time. Would anyone like to hold up and show me at what point you have come? No, you're not finished. Of course not. Okay, yeah, even if it's one flower. Thank you, Jane. Even if you just, just show me one. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. Make me smile. Oh, nice. You can see where it's going. You can see where it's going. Do you see enough that you want to continue and finish this? Okay. I don't know. Shall I? T how many of you, again, you said that you had oil pastels at home? One. How many, how many feel that they would now like to maybe get some? Okay. All right, go ahead. Because I don't want to just send you home really frustrated. All right. If you feel, okay, that you are not going to buy them and you don't have them and you want to borrow uh, a set, I would be happy to let it go home for a week as long as you bring it back next week so that we can use them again for another class. How many would like to just borrow their set right now? Okay, great, great, you're welcome. Just take the set home and I guess that's it, huh? And bring it back because <laughs> I will hunt you down. I know where you live. Okay, thank you very much again for coming and visiting uh, with us and learning oil pastels and about the most wonderful artist this world has ever known, Vincent van Gogh. Be, be at peace. <laughs>